this is going to be another question and answer video. And this one is on assurance of salvation. I believe every Christian at one time or another is going to doubt their salvation. I believe there are different reasons why people may doubt their salvation. One reason is because they think that since they aren't living right or maybe falling off into the same sin over and over again, they think that this means they couldn't really be saved. But I believe the main reason is because they don't understand what they got at salvation. They don't understand that salvation is very simple and at the same time has nothing to do with themselves, but has everything to do with Jesus Christ. He is the one who does the saving. He is the one who did the work. He is the one who keeps you saved. He is the one who lived a righteous life. He is the only way it is even possible. Just because a person doubts their salvation doesn't mean they are lost. If they doubt their salvation because they are bothered by a pet sin, then that is actually more of a sign that they are saved because you're bothered by the sin. Romans 6.21 says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Before I was saved, I could do things and I wouldn't even blush. Now, if someone even thinks I'm doing those things, I just feel terrible. For example, before I was saved, it was nothing for me to cuss and laugh at dirty jokes with my friends. But now if someone even thinks I laughed at a dirty joke or thought I cussed, then I just feel terrible about it. Like one time some... Some, uh, something bad happened at work and I said I said the, the phrase oh man and some of the guys thought I said oh blank and I, I felt terrible and but I, I convinced them I you know I didn't say this word but before it was nothing for me to drop some cuss words and not even care what people thought about it the fact that you care about sinning is more of a sign that you're saved than the fact that you are committing a sin is a sign that you're not saved I mean, if a person has no desire for God or the Bible, then they should just check up and make sure that they are saved. But many times people have approached me and they say they are struggling with a certain sin and they feel bad about it and worry they're not saved because of it. But the fact that they are so bothered by it is a good sign that they are saved. But notice how easy it was for men in the Bible to come to the Lord, even in other dispensations. God did not make it hard to get to him. And you know about wicked King Manasseh, all the bad things he did. He killed, he made his son and, or daughter to pass through the fire, used enchantments, used witches, did all these horrible things. But look what happens to him in Second Chronicles 33, 11 through 13. It says, Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captain of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. So, see how easy it was? How easy it was for Manasseh to get to God even after all the bad things that he did. It was easy for him. And that's in the Old Testament. A wicked king. Also remember the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, 36 and 37. It says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Notice how easy it was for the Ethiopian eunuch. It's not hard at all. The Philippian jailer in Acts 16, 29 through 33 says, Then he called for a lot and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straight way. God didn't make it hard on the Philippian jailer. God didn't make it hard on you to get to him. It says in 2 Corinthians eleven three, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In 1 Corinthians fourteen thirty three, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So he made it easy for us. He makes it easy for us to get to him. Your second birth is as real and permanent as your first birth. Have you ever heard someone say, pinch me? Uh, 
to let them know they're really alive or awake and that this isn't just a dream. So I'm going to give you some verses to pinch you and show you that you are really born again. If you have believed the gospel, then you are alive in Christ. In John 3, 3 through 4, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now Nicodemus didn't understand that Jesus Christ was talking about a spiritual birth here. But he realized that a person could not enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again physically. So the same way that you can't go back into your mother's womb and get unborn and be reborn that way, you can't go back and get unborn spiritually speaking either. Uh, Nicodemus has more understanding of what Jesus is saying than uh, a lot of people today that think you can lose their salvation because they're thinking you can go back and get unborn again. Nicodemus knew you couldn't get go back and get unborn physically. And people today are thinking you can go back and get unborn spiritually. I went to a holiness church for two years, and this preacher would say if you got off into sin, you would have to get reborn again. That makes no sense whatsoever. Can you get reborn physically? No. Can you get unborn spiritually and then have to get reborn? That makes no sense when you think about it. 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, so you can know. So let's take each of the letters of the word, know, K-N-O-W, and show you how you can know that you are saved. K can stand for knowledge of the truth. What's the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. There are some people who, 2 Timothy 3, 7 says, are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What does a man need to know to be saved? In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it gives you the gospel. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. But which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. What does a man need to know to be saved? In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul gives us the simple, clear gospel. In 1 Corinthians 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the gospel is simple. Jesus died. Jesus shed his blood for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. That is the gospel. You have to know Jesus Christ died for your sins. So you have to know that you are a sinner. If you don't know you're a sinner, then you don't even know why you needed a Savior. And you don't even know why you needed saving in the first place. You have to know these things. Galatians 3.22 But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. They're all under, we're all under sin. Have you come to the knowledge of the truth? If you have, then you can know you're going to heaven when you die. Jesus Christ paid your sin debt. When he was on the cross, he paid for all your sins. All you do is accept the payment. Believe on Jesus Christ and he will save you. Your sins will be paid for. So now you know the facts. Are you going to trust in Jesus Christ and in Him alone to save you? If a person knows that Jesus Christ died and shed His blood and they know He died for their sins and they will place their faith on Him, then they will be eternally saved. So the letter K in the word no can stand for knowledge of the truth. Do you have the knowledge of the truth? What does a person need to know? Now, the letter N in the word no. 
That could stand for nobody can save themselves. If you realize that being good before salvation can't save you and being good after salvation can't save you, then you will know that nobody can save themselves and what you're trusting in has to be Jesus Christ and not yourself. If you're thinking, when you, when you uh, think about your salvation, like when you're examining yourself to see if you're saved, if you're thinking about what you did before salvation, and if you're thinking about what you did after salvation, then you're thinking about the wrong thing. You're putting the focus on you instead of putting the focus on Jesus Christ. In Galatians 2.21, it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Meaning, if you could live righteous enough to earn heaven, then Jesus Christ died for no reason. A lot of times people, when they're examining themselves to see if they're saved, they're thinking, well, I did this and this after I believed, so I couldn't really be saved. You're putting the focus on you. What does that have to do with you being saved? It doesn't have anything to do with you being saved. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in the other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus and not you. It is his name that's connected with righteousness, not your name. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. It's not your name. If you could live good enough after salvation to earn heaven, then you would be like those guys at the Tower of Babel trying to make yourself a name. Nobody can save themselves. Nobody can make them a name that's going to be up there with the name above every name. And if you could live good enough after salvation to earn heaven, then your name would be up there with the name above every name. Because Jesus Christ has a name above every name, and that's the only name that's ever lived good enough to go to heaven. That's the only person. He's the only one that fulfilled all righteousness. You didn't fulfill all righteousness after you got saved. The only righteousness, righteousness you got is from Jesus. So the N and the word no can stand for nobody can save themselves. You can't save yourself. And for that reason, the O and the word no can mean only Jesus can save. In John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If anyone is confident in themselves after salvation, that they are keeping themselves saved or living right enough to prove they are saved, then they are just being self-righteous. In Romans 10, 3, it says, For they being ignorant, of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. It's the righteousness of God that lets you go to heaven. Romans 4, 5 through 8, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. When you got saved, the Lord took your folder out of his file cabinet and burned your unrighteous record. He then gave you Jesus Christ's spotless record and put that in your folder. Now when he opens your folder and looks at it, he sees the record of Jesus Christ. He no longer sees the bad thing that you have done before salvation or after salvation. And when it comes to your salvation, he doesn't even see the good things that you have done. The good things that you do aren't even put in that folder because it's not about what you've done that gets you to heaven. It's about what Jesus Christ did. It's Jesus Christ's record in that file cabinet if you're saved in that folder. Not yours, not the good things you've done and not the bad things you've done. For example, this is an impossible situation here, but for the sake of an illustration, imagine if a man just got saved and then he never sinned one time after his salvation and went around serving God and doing good. All those good things he did after his salvation still have nothing to do with him going to heaven and they didn't keep him saved. 
And if a man gets saved and never did anything for God after salvation, his record when it comes to his salvation is just as spotless as the guy who never sinned after salvation. Because a saved person's record has the righteousness of Jesus Christ on it and not their righteousness or their unrighteousness. It has the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is what you call imputed righteousness. Where God doesn't impute your sin to your record. He only puts the Lord's Jesus Christ's righteousness on it. Only Jesus can save you. That's what the O and the word no can stand for. You can't save yourself. So now, this is what the W can stand for in the word no. Works are about discipleship. The W could stand for works are about discipleship. If you could get this thing down and put it in your head, you would always have assurance. Works are about discipleship. It's not about salvation. You can be saved and not be a disciple. If you're being a disciple, then you're trying to learn about God through His Word, and then you're doing the work of God. And then there may have been a time when you were a disciple, but then you started living wrong and began to warm yourself by the world's fire. And you quit being a disciple. You're still saved. But you're not being a disciple. You're still saved because the unrighteous things you do aren't applied to your soul. God cut your soul loose from your flesh at salvation. This is the spiritual circumcision, which is what you call spiritual circumcision. If people could understand this doctrine of salvation... The spiritual circumcision, they would have assurance. They wouldn't doubt their salvation. Colossians 2.11, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. When you got saved, God performed an operation on you where he cut your soul loose from your flesh, now, every time your flesh sins, the sins aren't applied to the soul. You keep a spotless record on your soul. It's the Lord Jesus Christ's record. When you got saved, you got the first step of, of sanctification. In 1 Corinthians 1, 30 through 31, it says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So you got the first step of sanctification when you got saved. And that can never be changed. You've been cut loose from your flesh. You've been set apart at salvation. Now the works that you do are not about salvation because that's already fixed. The works that you do are about your discipleship. God set you apart for good. But then after salvation, there is another sanctification that is your responsibility. And this is a daily sanctification where every day you die to the flesh and live for the Lord. But these are works that are about discipleship, not works that are about getting saved or staying saved. So you see a difference there. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 4, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. God sanctified you once and for all when you believed. That's salvation. Now you sanctify yourself daily, and that is discipleship. And works are not about salvation. Works are for discipleship. God justified you. He declared you righteous when you weren't righteous. Justification is God took you, an unrighteous person, and said, He's righteous. He's going to heaven. And he was able to do that because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ when you believed. Romans 3, 24 through 26, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Have you ever messed up and you thought God was angry with you so you try to do something to make him not angry with you anymore? Jesus has already did that too. In 1 John 2, 2 it says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 
1 John 14, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Romans 3, 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So the, pro the propitiation has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ appeasing the wrath of God through his death on the cross. Your works did not appease the wrath of God. So when you mess up, uh, don't try to just start doing a bunch of good things to appease the wrath of God. Jesus already appeased the wrath of God. What you need to do is if you're saved and you sin, confess your sins and just continue living for God. Isaiah 53, 10 says, it, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. When Jesus was on the cross, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It was appeasing his wrath. Sometimes you start thinking, I'm no good and I can't be saved because I'm no good. You're right that you're no good. But that is why you were able to be saved in the first place is because you are no good. And if you were any good, you wouldn't need saving. Paul said himself in Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. If you didn't deserve salvation when you got it, then why would you think you could do anything to deserve it after you did get it? So, I hope I've given you assurance of salvation. When you start doubting your salvation, just think of the word no. The Bible says you can know. The letter K, do you have the knowledge of the truth? You know the gospel. You know what it takes to be saved. You know what it takes to come to the knowledge of the truth. The letter N, nobody can save themselves. It's not about what you did before salvation. It's not about what you did after salvation. Oh, only Jesus can save you. Look to him. When you think about, when you're examining yourself, don't think about what you did before salvation or after salvation. Think about Jesus Christ. And have you believed on him? W, works are about discipleship. Realize that the things that you do after salvation, this isn't to stay saved. This is about your discipleship. And you're wanting to be a disciple for the Lord Jesus Christ, not to stay saved, but because you love Jesus Christ. That's the reason. Works are about discipleship. Works are not for salvation. But I hope this has helped give somebody assurance.